good morning. Well, uh, this is going to be the abridged raw version of the Possum Creek Radio Show. Why? Well, this week uh, my computer where I store all my other stuff caught a nasty virus. Uh, some sort of weird ransomware I've never seen before. Um, I don't know. It's been acting funny for a couple of weeks and then suddenly it popped up and crash so in order to prevent it spread and to avoid any other problems I decided I'd just reload the machine instead of trying to you know disinfect it and possibly spreading it to other machines so I lost like uh, some pictures the PowerPoint uh, slides that I used for the segments between the show some of the theme music I'm gonna have to go find all that but since it happened yesterday afternoon and today is the day we filmed the show. I haven't had time to do that. And instead of pro postponing the show yet again, I decided, hey, let's just do it raw. Why not? So that's what you're going to get this week. It's been a good week. Um, been working on some custom orders, just grinding away. Things are going pretty good here. Um, it's hot. It, we've got another heat wave that's come upon us. It's a high of 103 today. So I'm going to hide in the workshop all day. I don't like this heat too much. But it's West Texas. What are you going to do? The, the main themes we're going to cover today are dogs and fear. So enjoy. This is Ume. She's our new dog. Found her on the side of the road. Somebody had abandoned her. We live out in the country, and people do that all the time out here. They just dump their dogs or puppies, usually. That's how we got our last one, and that's how we got this one. I don't know. I guess I'm a big softie, and I can't I can't stand to just leave them out there to die. Um, can't take them to the pound. Uh, the pound will just kill them. They've got too many puppies already. You know, she's not really some adorable breed, popular breed. She's just probably mixed mutt um, but she's sweet and she's devoted and, well I guess she's gonna be put to work on a farm the dogs we have already are pretty useful we got one of them and uh, he spends his time his little area is down by the garden so he protects it from deer and other critters that would get in there and eat our food and he lets us know if anything's coming around. And we found him by the road last year. And the other dog, we brought him from Illinois with us when we moved down here. And he's he's a herd dog. And he really served a purpose when we had sheep. But he doesn't serve much of a purpose now. But he's older. And, you know, we're attached. So we keep him. Um, he'd really do better with a family that had sheep. Because uh, that's what he's bred for, and that's what he loves to do, and he's good at it. But here, he's sort of our alarm system. He barks if anybody comes around the house, and that's where he stays. So, that that works. Ume, I think, is going to be our inside guard dog. Um, she will bond with the wife and the kids and stay primarily uh, in the house at night. So that if anybody comes busting in through the door, oh, Ume, the terrible here, will deal with them. Ain't that right, Ume? Yes, Ume, the terrible. <laughs> she's not much of a terror now. I don't think she'd have survived long in the woods. She'd lost, she's starting to fill back out a little bit, flush out a little bit. I think she was dehydrated. She also, she had this huge bloated belly uh, where she had worms. And them worms were just eating all her food and... Um, there's a lot of natural remedies. You can give them chili powder, garlic, uh, diatomaceous earth. You can feed all that stuff to them. And it's supposed to kill the worms. But like most natural remedies, it's more of a preventative than a cure. And it's slow. And I'm not, based on the state she was in when I found her, I'm not real sure how long she had. So I busted out and we took her to the vet. And the first vet, I took her to, they gave me some dog food for her, but they wouldn't give me a worm pill unless I went and gave her a full exam, you know, which was 60 bucks, which I can't afford. So I was like, well, moving on. So then I got the lecture about 
Um, don't keep animals if you can't afford them. Well, I can afford little Ume here. I cannot afford to keep the vet. So the next vet was a little more understanding, and they gave us a um, a pill. It cost like ten bucks, and basically they they looked at her, they weighed her, and they gave me a worm pill. Said if she doesn't have worms, it won't won't hurt her. And uh, I think the other vet just wanted the the money for the exam. And so you know that ten bucks was a little more affordable for Ume. So Ume got Ume is doing a lot better. Um, She's not as swollen. She's not uh, as dehydrated. She's got a lot of energy now where she just wanted to lay. She doesn't look like she has a lot of energy, but I pulled her out from under the workbench so y'all could see her, and that's where she was taking a nap. She is a little baby, so she needs lots of naps. Um, she's eating her food. She's keeping it down. She's not making a mess. Um, anyway, she's doing better. She went and played with the boys this morning, the, the other dogs. Not not the, the human boys, <laughs> but uh, the, they're big and they're rough. The boys are rough, and they they knock her down and bowl her over, and she doesn't like that. So she'll play with them a little bit and kind of chase along after them, but she then she runs back and gets under my feet. Ume is uh, in Japanese. Ume means plum, and the plum blossom is a symbol of devotion so we believe in naming animals um, giving animals names that suit them suit the character you want them to develop if you want a warrior dog you name the dog a warrior name if you want a devoted dog you name the dog a devoted name and she was also fat like a plum <laughs> so anyway Ume's doing well uh, she's getting on. A dog is a useful thing on a farm. You want to take your nap, honey? All right. I'm going to put her down so she can take her nap. I'm getting old. When I bend over, I make old person noises. Anyway, she uh, she's found a home, and she's doing good. I'm, I'm pleased. The... The mindset of people who dump dogs is just beyond me. Uh, it, it'd be more humane to kill them. I mean, she was really suffering out there when we found her. And, uh, you know, the other dog, Fang, when we found him, he was almost dead in a ditch. He was so dehydrated. That was during the height of summer. We hadn't had any rain. And uh, there was no water for him, no food. And he was living in a culvert. He, I think for the first two, three months of his life, even after we got him, he was terrified of coyotes. Uh, just any sort of a night noise would just terrify him beyond belief. He'd start howling and yelling. Um, but he's gotten over it now. Now he's big, tough, protector dog. He'd probably be embarrassed if I was telling y'all, if he knew I was telling y'all about how he used to howl when he heard the coyotes. But... Dogs on a farm are useful. Um, they do eat a lot, but dog food is not incredibly expensive. Um, dogs on a farm are a useful part of your uh, your farm security plan. They watch out for predators. They're they're good at spotting people or other animals that are creeping around. They can smell real well. Uh, they extend your awareness of what's going on on the farm. If you let them, if you just ignore them when they bark, well, they're not doing you any good. Uh, dogs in the city seem to bark all the time. Dogs out in the country, it's kind of iffy. You know, some of them bark just because they hear something. But their threat assessment's not real good. So a lot of times at, you know, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'll hear one of the dogs carrying on. And it could mean, it could mean that... Um, he heard another dog off in the distance bark. It could mean he saw a deer, a wild pig, a skunk, um, a cat. He heard something. Um, or it could mean that, you know, there's a Mexican drug cartel squad of assassins out there with knives. Uh, it, he doesn't know. He's just a dog. The older dog I have, he is much more mature and he 
he barks at what he considers real threats, which are strangers. And he's more useful. So sort of the system around here is if I hear one dog barking for a long time and the dog doesn't stop, then I'll get out and investigate. Or I'll investigate immediately if I hear both dogs barking. So sort of a two alarm system. And I don't know how yet Ume is going to integrate into that. The, the dogs alone, though, they're meant to alert me if there's a problem. I don't intend for them to fight off predators. I do not intend for them intend for them to protect me from, you know, burglars, meth heads, whatever might be creeping around out there in the dark. Um, that they're not equipped for that. They they're equipped to warn me and be part of my alert system, but they're not equipped to defend me against that. Um, and I don't want them to. A dog could get hurt pretty bad going up against a person, especially a person out there with a gun. Now, these dogs would. Uh, they're all extremely devoted, and they're gonna they're gonna defend this household to the death. Uh, I've not seen any of them back down from either strange dogs or other concern. So that's what they're used for. Um, but I got to do my part, and I got to actually wake up in the middle of the night if I hear them going on, and get up and at least peek out a window and see what's going on. The the, the ever-present threat of critters that are after your livestock, well, just the smell of dogs around and the, the sound and the smell and the sight will keep a lot of predators at bay, especially if the dogs are allowed a little bit of the run of the farm. And ours sometimes are, sometimes not. Um, one of them will cause mischief with the chickens. He's, a, he's some sort of hunting breed, and he has a real strong desire to get after a chicken. It's strange because he'll only chase a chicken if you're there. And he'll start chasing one like he wants to kill it. And then he'll turn around and look at you like, ha ha, I'm doing good. And you're like, no. And then he hangs his head, oh, that's right, I'm not supposed to do that. The other one has already learned. We've taught him not to chase chickens. He's older. He doesn't have much chicken chasing in him anyway. Ume, I don't know what kind of breed she is. She looks like she might be part Labrador at least, so that is a chicken chasing breed. Anyway, I'll let y'all know in the future how this comes out with Ume. I think she's going to do pretty well here, and uh, I'm glad to have found her. Reading the discussion forums and hearing people talk, there seems to be a growing concern that we are moving towards a state of war um, on multiple fronts. Um, war with Syria, which could turn into war with Russia and China or anybody else, um, or war within our own government. I think there's just a heightened state of fear, a heightened state of fear that's creeping up on everybody. And I don't know that it impacts us too much here on the farm. I, this is just so far outside my scope of control that I don't really worry about it. I put it in God's hand. War always comes. Uh, sooner or later, we're going to have a war. Whether we have this one, whether we dodge the bullet this time, or we go another 10 years without war, the people in government, they can't exist without war. Um, our entire civilization is built upon an unsustainable model where we exploit resources from our own land and then the land of others. The whole model of the city versus rural is that the rural landscape is exploited and all the resources go to the city to be consumed and nothing really comes back out um, except for you know whatever trade goods they deign to send and that's that's all of western civilization uh, it's a lot of eastern civilization too for that matter it's anything beyond the neo-tribal level works that way and well we've exploited a lot of the resources in our country and uh, well now we're going after others and if they won't sell it to us willingly, we'll go get it. And I, I think some of this is, uh, of course, about oil. It always comes down to oil. Since oil was discovered and it, it runs civilization, wars are going to be fought over oil. I personally think this one is not being fought so much over oil, but over the dollar bill. The dollar uh, is propped up by oil. People... There's, a, there's an agreement and people trade 
oil for American dollars. And, you know, these countries, uh, they're trying to break away from that agreement. Saddam Hussein broke away from the agreement. He got hanged. Uh, Gaddafi broke away from that agreement. And we supported the rebels there. And he got ambushed, drug out of his truck, sodomized, and then killed. And now you've got Assad, and we're helping the rebels there. Even though they're not in any way, shape, form, or fashion, our friends, friendly to us, democratic, uh, Christian, they're, they're, there's no similarities to us. They're absolutely the bad guys, and we're about to help them. Probably because a deal has been cut that they'll support the dollar, and Assad won't support the dollar. So, time to go to war. I don't know, this is beyond my pay grade. Um, I grow okra, and I deal with dogs, and I make knives. Those are the things I can control, and those are the areas where I focus my life on. If you are concerned about all this, I think now is a great time to make sure you have plenty of food, water, some arrangements for your security have been made, your personal physical security on your farm. Um, have a plan. Just have a plan what to do. This one could get ugly. This is a situation that is new on the planet. It's not the same old war. This is not your father's war. This is somebody else's war. This is a new war. And if you're not in a secure position, I don't mean just physically, but I mean spiritually, physically, emotionally, then it's going to take its toll on you. So you need to start moving to where you need to be. Well, that's our show, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. It's a little more raw and uncut than uh, before. A little bit of jumpy. I've got some new video editing software. Uh, we've transitioned from Windows to Ubuntu on all of our computers. So I had to go get brand new software and learn how to put all this together. Uh, my camera only holds about four minutes at a time of video. So I've got to take four minutes, copy it, four minutes, cut it, and then psh, string it all together to make a video. And that takes video editing software, which I'm learning. So, got some new knives up in the knife shop. We're expanding out a little bit. Um, finishing up all my custom orders. I got, I think, one left now that I got to finish. And then it's going to be back to just making the off the shelf knives that you can go and look at and purchase. Things are looking up, things are good. Uh, hang in there. Don't let the, the news and the political situation and the geopolitical situation get you down pray now's a good time to pray pray a lot and God will preserve us he always does whether he preserves the nation is a different story and uh, sometimes I question whether whether or not I'll be wrapped up in that whether or not I'll be punished with what the nation is because I've certainly participated in a lot of the nation's sins but I ask forgiveness for myself and for the nation and I hope that God sees fit to spare at least some of us watch out guys this is going to be a tough week coming ahead um, but God willing I'll see y'all next week keep on being y'all